Hi YouTube, today I wanted to share with you guys a uh, experience I really had with me, my Acura TS6 2004 but it should be the same for most of the Hondas and Acuras. Uh, this is a great experience to share with you guys because if ever you get this problem, kind of problem do not be scared or be afraid, it might be just something really really small. So the main problem I had with my um, TS6 was a transmission problem. Uh, I had uh, a flashing D showing on the dashboard or the clutch cluster itself, um, from the cluster, sorry, and uh, it was flashing, right, and then uh, the car was stuck at the certain gear, a uh, second gear, for example, and uh, it wouldn't go higher than second gear, um, and then I would be able to manual shift it, but uh, after a few more tries or a few more minutes, the car just gave up, didn't want to know anything about uh, the speed or anything, um, I was, you know, maximum speed was first gear. Yeah, first gear, that, and that's about it. First gear, I couldn't even go on the highway or anything. Um, that was a huge problem for me, so I had to park somewhere and have the car towed. So if ever you get this kind of problem, do not be afraid. Maybe there's still some hope. It's not the transmission, um, if you're lucky like me. <laughs> or maybe not, you know, sometimes it's just a small problem. Okay, so um, I used the check engine uh, reader, and it showed uh, two codes. The first code was a code that told me that it was the output shaft speed sensor and the other one was uh, was called output shaft speed sensor malfunction and the other one was um, output shaft uh, speed sensor um, or non-existent or something like that missing um, so it pointed out to be the output shaft sensor why is this happening that's because the computer does not receive any information about what speed you're currently at um, so the computer cannot determine when to shift properly so I guess Acura or Honda have this computer know when to shift depending on the speedometer. Um, that's one of the sensors that it or the information that it requires in order to shift. Um, there was four symptoms um, that, that I can tell you about and maybe you'll have the same problem. So the first one will be a check engine light. Um, the second one will be a flashing D after driving a minute or two. Um, what else? The third one was... The speedometer didn't work at all and the fourth one you'll notice that uh, the gears will be stuck at either first or second um, it won't work um, one of the ways you can not bypass but if you, you really need the car to, dr to be driven um, like you cannot have the car sit on, on the driveway it's to remove the output shaft sensor this way the computer will know that it doesn't work anymore it doesn't have that um, information it's not a malfunction problem, so it's good, just gonna ignore that problem. Of course, um, your gear is gonna shift very harshly, but your car will still work. It's just that it doesn't know properly what RPM or what speed to uh, really shift at, so it completely depends on the, RP on the RPM instead. Um, to fix this problem, it's pretty easy and pretty simple. Uh, on your transmission, automatic transmission, and uh, manual transmission has uh, this sensor as well. Um, there's this out input and output. Um, sensor which I'm gonna show you um, in a few seconds and um, yeah just change these um, I got these parts from Rock Auto uh, Rock Auto Rock Auto uh, yeah Rock Auto yeah and uh, they were like uh, 60 bucks for the output and 40 bucks for the input um, yeah I got lucky and it uh, it worked perfectly uh, my car didn't have an intake so you have to remove the intake first. Um, and then you have, see two sensors at the bottom, but you have to somehow manage some more space, like moving uh, one of the fuse boxes at, in the engine bay um, a bit further, so you have more space to wrench. It's a 10 millimeter bolt holding each of these uh, sensors and disconnect them, uh, remove the bolt, and that's about it. Um, and don't forget, do not use too much strength to pry these sensors, because there was one of them I used a lot of strength. I broke completely the, the sensor itself, uh, it's made in plastic, right? And it just broke and it took me hours. I had to use a torch, burn the plastic, and finally I, it got out. But it was just so tight inside that it didn't want to come out, you know? Um, imagine a transmission that's been having this sensor for like uh, over 12 years or 13 years, you know? It's normal, right? All the seals and everything. You have, you'll have to find the fuel filter, which is right here. And if you find a fuel, fuel, fuel filter, it's just like kind of below it. Okay, so here, this one here, you can see it in the middle. This one is 
the output shaft sensor and right after here right just right beside it this one is the input shaft sensor and uh, I really hope that, that I was able to show you a great experience today and uh, I hope that you have this small little problem then a really transmission problem also um, there's some ways that you can determine if you don't have a check engine code uh, reader um, it's to short the pin 4 and 9 of your OBD port uh, this one here okay so you short these two pins, the pin number four and then number nine with a paper clip, you just bend it, short it, it's gonna work. And then you put your keys on on and then pay attention to the D, okay? The D itself. With the D itself, um, you can pretty much determine um, what check engine code. So each long pulse represents 10. So if you have two long pulses, it's gonna be 20. It's gonna start with long pulses first, and then it's gonna do the short pulses, and it's gonna blink faster and faster. It's gonna blink faster than the pure, previous ones. So that's how you determine the, uh, what check engine, uh, what um, transmission code you have. And then, um, but the, the quick pulses represents one. So you have, for example, let's say two long pulses, that's 20, and then you have seven long pulses, 27. So you have a automatic transmission code of 27 and then down below the description below okay um, I'm, I tell you what each transmission code represents and uh, this way you can determine the what code you have and um, there's one thing you have to know these codes represent that you have an electrical problem not a mechanical problem mechanical problem that's something else but if you do have a flashing D and it's worth a try right so with this method, it determines whether you have a transmission, uh, electrical problem or a mechanical problem. And also, um, you can check uh, the check engine at the same time if you do not have a check engine reader. Um, and yeah, and then you just Google up uh, the, the 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 check engine code you've received, and uh, you should be able to find it. But uh, using the uh, automatic transmission um, code. Pulses should give you a great idea if your transmission is done or not. So this was uh, on the Acura TS6 2004. Uh, it worked on every Civic, every Accord, every Acura TL, every CRV. Um, I've checked it on the service manuals. They all have the same pins layout to determine the uh, automatic check engine code. So you can use the same method. Um, and that's it and I hope that I helped you today um, like I said do not worry if you have a, you have this kind of problem it's just maybe sometimes just a sensor if you're lucky uh, if not then uh, I'm sorry I hope I really hope that I helped you today and I shared a great experience and um, because I tried to Google all around that for this problem on my Acura TSX no one shared this problem on the forums no one I never just never heard it no one, I just couldn't find any information about it. I tried using keywords like Civic, um, Accord, just couldn't find it, man. I, so that's why I really want to share, share with you guys this kind of problem and I hope I help you guys. And I hope you really like my videos as well. Um, I'll continue to make some more and more. And uh, yeah, like always have a great day. And if you like my videos, please subscribe. Um, I hope I have still some time to film some more cars because winter is approaching and you, as you all may know, Canada is really, really cold. Have a great day everyone and thank you for watching. Ciao!